first and foremost, on behalf of myself, Birmingham City Council, and the City of Birmingham, I'd, I'd like to offer my deepest condolences to the family, the friends, and this very close-knit community on the tragic murder of Uncle Salim. Uh, today, as you can see, we've organised a community vigil so that people can come together and pay respect to Mr Salim, who was murdered here last Monday evening. And as you can see, we've had a large turnout. We had uh, uh, Ahmed Bostan come in down, he spoke. Andrew Smith, who is the Director of Interfaith Relations for the Bishop of Birmingham. Uh, Gerald, who is the Chair of the West Midlands Faith Forum. And I can assure you that when Christians across Birmingham heard the news of Mr Salim's murder last week, they were appalled and horrified. They were shocked that someone of such good standing uh, could be murdered so brutally on their way home from prayers. And so I bring you uh, not only my condolences uh, to the family, to the friends and to this community, but from Christians right across Birmingham uh, who are really upset by what they heard and what they saw happen. And I want to assure you that Christians across this city are praying for you and stand alongside you as you go through this very difficult and traumatic time. You know, I thought it was important because I've seen how other communities have come together and rally together. In the case of April Jones and the other three chaps up in the riots, the girl in India who was gang raped and so on and so forth. And when these incidents took place, there were, the community came together as one and decided to hold vigils in the memory to light candles, say prayers, and thought it would be a good way to honour Mr Slim as well, not just for the small leaf community, for the, but for the wide Birmingham to come together as well. Last week, not just the people of Small Heath, but the people of Birmingham lost not just a leader of our community, but an inspiration to each and every one of us. Somebody who dedicated his entire life in service of his faith and in service of the wider community as a whole. And it is a point of great tragedy and travesty that such a great individual was taken away from us in the most horrific and abhorrent way one can imagine. At a time when many fingers are being pointed at the Muslim community in Birmingham for all the wrong reasons, for reasons that we disown, we have lost somebody in this community, someone who gave so much for this community, a pious, religious, activist in this community, somebody who is a role model for not just Muslims in this city, but all residents of the city of Birmingham. I understand this is one of the most difficult times for the family. I understand it's one of the most difficult times for the friends of Uncle Salim and this community. But today, the solidarity shown by the city of Birmingham and its residents, we've got people here from all faiths and no faith. We've got people here from a very diverse community, standing shoulder to shoulder as one with the family of Uncle Salim. I just wanted to be here to just pay respects um, to Mr. Salim. Um, I, I appreciate he was a very faithful man within the Muslim faith, but it is something that um, others of us, I mean, I'm, I myself am Christian, and I work with a lot of people from different faith backgrounds and we can recognize that faithfulness. We can recognize that dedication and we, and we certainly share your, your grief and your concern at this time because as far as we're concerned, a horrible attack like that on him is an attack on us all. Uh, he was extremely well loved in this community. I mean, a lot of people, not just the ones associated with the Green A Mosque, but the gym that his son owned, uh, the youngsters in the area where he lived, the people you see him around, he was quite well loved and respected. I think that's what shocked a lot of people. He was just a 75 year old going about his daily business. He was uh, brutally murdered uh, a week ago today. Firstly, from a personal note, I'd also like to pass on my condolences to the family who've lost Mr. Salim, to his friends and to the community. It's quite apparent from everything I've heard about Mr. Salim that this place would be a much better place if more and more people were like him. And it's clearly a loss for the family, but it's clearly also a loss for the community. And I'm genuinely sorry for what's happened. 
Secondly then, I'd like to talk about the investigation. Uh, and it's an investigation that West Midlands Police is taking incredibly seriously. We have a large amount of detectives and police officers working on this and who will continue to work on this investigation until it is solved. Open to the police are lots of channels of communication, lots of intelligence, lots of evidence gathering opportunities. And it's really imperative that we work together to try and solve this. Without a shadow of doubt, the police is not a separate organisation. The police represents the community, it's made up of members of the community, and the police are desperately keen to solve this murder. I've spoken to the senior investigating officer today on a number of occasions, and I am content and really encouraged by the amount of work that is going in. And I am confident, as he is, that we will bring the killer or killers of Mr. Salim to justice. There's been a lot of ideas and hypotheses going round in relation to what could be the motivation for this. And we are looking at every single one of those and we're treating every single one seriously. I know on behalf of the senior investigating officer I'd like to thank the family and I'd like to thank you as the immediate friends and family and community for helping us and working with the police. At the end of the day we're not two individual organisations. We're here to work together to make this community better. Uh, I want to do that in East Birmingham and in West Birmingham and in South Birmingham and in Central Birmingham and I know you want to as well. So this is our uh, uncle. There's been an assurance made that all resources required for this investigation were put into this investigation and we, the police and, and the city as a whole will leave no stone unturned until those responsible, whether it was an individual or individuals responsible, are not arrested and brought to justice. <laughs> Here, we also need the support of the community. The police will be, will be making a formal request to you, but I would urge each and every one of you, if you were in, the, in this particular area last week, or if you were in the vicinity of this area, make sure you speak to the police because you might have uh, the, the, the smallest of pieces of evidence, the smallest piece of that jigsaw will ha that will help make that crucial arrest. Many of you would have seen the CCTV image of this individual running away. Many of you here and people across this community will have their own personal CCTV system set up in their households. Please make those CCTV footage available to the police because you never know there may be something on there which can help arrest this particular individual. I think it's paramount that we've got the police on board because otherwise it could be chaos. I mean generally people don't trust the police. I mean they don't like working with them but having the police are reassuring the community that they are working on the investigation and that they will do whatever they can to catch Mr Slim I think send out an important message and I think the real appeal today from the police to the community that if you just say anything on that tragic night, get in touch. I think that's been very important. A lot of people have really appreciated the fact that someone's come together and, you know, put this on for Mr. Slee. <laughs> Ya Allah, please grant the family support during this very difficult time. Ya Allah, please bring those who committed this terrible act against Uncle Salim to justice. Ya Allah, please give us a tawfiq, please give us the ability to move forward in a progressive way.